Hi, Marco here. Let me show you how to use TeamCity's Kotlin DSL for your microservice projects. I prepared a tiny TeamCity Kotlin DSL project for you. You'll find the link below the video. You'll be able to clone it. In any case, it's a simple project consisting of one microservice at the moment, which is called the calculator service. Imagine it's a small web app uh, for an insurance company, for example. We have one VCS route because the calculator service lives in the Git repository. And then we need to do three things. We need to compile the service. We need to build a Docker image. And we also need to deploy the service. So we have three different build types slash build configurations. And when we have a closer look at the compile service, for example, it's a simple build type slash build configuration with a name, you produce one jar file, and essentially you only have one build step, which is a Gradle build step, executing clean build. Now, when we go back to the project, imagine we wanted to add yet another microservice, an authorization microservice, and we're gonna go through different approaches in this video. The first approach being the very naive approach, we're just gonna copy and paste, we're just gonna duplicate all the code we already have. So instead of, you know, the calculator service, we're just going to add a new authorization service block down here with the same VCS route and a couple of different build types. Now, obviously, we also need to clone the service classes. I'm just going to do that with the compile class here. Right. And then inside here, also what you want to make sure is you simply replace the words make sure we catch also the lowercase variant, right? And now we have a compiled authorization service build type here. Obviously, we're still missing the build Docker image and deploy service build types and the VCS route. I'm just going to add that, and then we're going to meet back again in a second. Welcome back. I just finished creating all the additional objects, and our project compiles again. This also means that now for every additional microservice, we need four additional object files, which means our project is getting bloated pretty quickly. Let's try another more evolutionary approach. When you look at the compile authorization service and the calculator service, and you switch back and forth quickly, you'll see that essentially there's only a couple of fields where the values change. Now, why not remove these object files and just create a class file and then instantiate these two objects on the fly and let's cut down on the classes again. Let's meet back in a second when I have finished creating the compile service class. Hello again. As you can see, we now have a class called compile service with three constructor arguments, a service name, an artifact name and a VCS root. As you can see, the service name is being put in here. The artifact name is being put inside the artifact rules and the VCS root is being used straight in the VCS roots block. When you go back to the settings KTS file, what I also changed is that now instead of, you know, having the additional objects, I'm just defining my compile calculator service here on the fly. Like so, just calling the constructor the same for the compile authorization service and down here, nothing changed. Now, obviously, I have to do the same thing with the build Docker image step and with the build deploy step as well. So I'm just going to do some more coding now and we're going to meet back again in another second. Right, welcome back. You can see that I deleted all the additional object files. And when you now have a look at the settings KTS file, we'll see that we essentially inlined all the objects right here into that file. There's a compile calculator service object now by just calling the compile service constructor. The same for building the Docker image, deploying the calculator service, and obviously the same also for all the corresponding authorization services. Now, the thing is, that might look slightly more compact, but again, it feels very verbose. Can't we make all of this here a tiny bit nicer? And yes, that's the third and the final evolution that I'm going to show in this video. We're going to add the concept of a pipeline. Let me just prepare some classes and I'll be right back. Welcome back. So what happened? I created a new pipeline Kotlin file. We're going to have a look at that in a second. And I deleted all the VCS routes. Now, 
pipeline contains a data class pipeline because I noticed, you know, all the different microservices, they differ in just three variables, essentially. The service name, so is it called calculator service, authorization service, the artifact name, lowercase, what is being built and what is being pushed into the Docker image, and then also the Git repository URL. That's all that differs between each and every microservice in my project. And then I thought about, let's add an extension function to my project. I'm going to show you in a second what that looks like in the settings KTS file, where we can just add a new pipeline to a project. It takes in our data class. And in here, essentially what you saw earlier, the different configurations, the different build types, they're all being put and registered inside that add pipeline function. So here we're registering our VCS route. Down here, we're registering, we're constructing and re registering our compile service, right? Passing in the data from our data class. The same with the Docker image build step and the same with the deploy step. All encapsulated here now inside the app pipeline function. Which then when we go back to our settings KTS file, this looks pretty nice now. Everything here is gone, all the object class configurations are gone. And what we have instead is we just call the add pipeline function, pass in a pipeline object, which simply is, as I said, the service name, artifact name, and the GitHub URL. And that's essentially all there is to it. Now to sum things up, we had a look at three different ways of approaching microservice projects with TeamCity's Kotlin DSL. We duplicated some code as the first naive approach, we extracted a couple of common classes as the second approach, and in the end, we ended up with a pipeline. Now, this code looks much better than at the beginning, but there's an even better way which we're gonna discuss in the next video. Bye.